still a good hero in the family setting, and I don't think that it was even addressed in this situation. Lapu Lapu is not the hero that you look for when going up against a Claude, because it's not a one-hit knockout kind of thing. Very similar to game one, then. Yeah. As we go into this match point for AP Bren, and the ghouls are holding on. The ghouls already adjusting the way they could, and I'll say it again, I said it in the draft, they're looking much better now, it just comes down to execution. Yeah, I'm really hoping that this early game goes well for the side of Burmese Ghouls to put up a really decent fight against AP Bren, but let's keep in mind, the scaling at the same time is looking kind of good for the side of AP Bren, right? If you really have to put the numbers down one to one, as we start seeing what some of the emblem picks are going to be, a lot of wilderness blessings coming out for the side of AP Bren. Mm, this seems to be a Burmese Ghouls uh, uh, decision that they really want to let their opponents rotate, because they'll pick the fights when they're ready. And look at this, Kyle Deasy just loading up from game one, man. He's doing yeah. the same thing. He really does, Wolf, live yeah. inside the ghoul's jungle. Oh, I wonder what, what were the setups for for AP Bread to actually allow this happen. I mean, we know that Nolan is pretty quick when it comes to dealing with oh. the jungle, but yeah, AP Bren and Kyle Deasy, you gotta, we gotta really check his address later on after this series. I see some ID. Yeah. I swear, if you open up his grab app, it's telling you your jungle every <laughs> single time. But noticing so that please. on the bottom side, that Stitch already losing that flicker, hopefully that doesn't get punished later on into the match. Because at least for the side of AP Bren, they have the option of saying, you know what, we don't need the turtle. We're just going to hurt you down oh, outside. Man. Oh my god. Kyle Deasy clearing the minion wave. That's. Curious. Fuse looking at Kyle's like, hey, come on, man. Come on, man. You know what? There's another wave coming in. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be uh, it's gonna be fine. They're just going to have to delay this turtle. They yeah. know that the Burmese Wolves can't go as fast. Yeah, and they will take the purple again. Okay, so this this is the rotation. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. This is and it. And then Ogwin just resets the turtle. Yeah, this is That's very really nice. Ah, this, this is so annoying. It's a this proactive delay. Wow, the rotation coming from AP Bren. And Kyle is level five as well. Like this, oh. they've set it up perfectly. <laughs> Here we go. Spacing them out. Carbon answering back. Few very oh. low. Gets taken out by Carbon. And now Ogun can't even respond. The ghouls pull the turtle all the way to their side. But wait, look at this. Very sneaky. Yeah. Kyle Teasy stole Kyle away the orange. And even the Rock Horsa is going to be taken out. Oh. Kyle Teasy's just taking away the farm. He's going down bot From side. Schools. Our farm. He's, he's going down bot side. No, oh, he's decided what? off of it. He's starting to head on through. They're going to contest. Coming in with the pull. Committing it on the Ogwin. Gets taken out. Turtle still standing. Watch Kyle TZ goes in. Nico still secures. And Nico gets out of there. That's a couple of wins. A big three minutes in for the ghouls. I love being at these internationals because now we are seeing the evolution of teams don't necessarily have to contest the turtle in the exact same way. Yeah. They can delay it. And more importantly so, these plays coming in from Carbon is actually making it worthwhile for the side of the Burmese ghouls. He's unlocked finally. And look at Stitch trying to actually bait out this blazing uh -oh. duet. Big 2v1, close call. Open yep. almost caught Stitch, but Stitch saw it coming. Yep. And Super Marco survived that. He was able to get that cart, the catapult, or the cannon. And uh, also, Burmese Schools was able to get the turtle. This means that they are in a much, much, much better spot compared to the previous game. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to see much more aggression coming in for the Burmese Schools in just a little bit, especially as we're starting to move in and end this early stage of the game. But I I'm curious. I feel like AP Brand, well, more so towards the Burmese Schools, want to extend the laning phase for as long as they can. Yeah. And this is not how AP Bren was looking to let this rotation go. This is cool because the ghouls are learning as we're going. Oh wait, Stitch down bottom, not gonna survive long enough to get his ult off as Kyle Teasy pops him off 1v1. It's clear that at least for the side of AP Bren, they're looking to just punish Stitch every single time. They kind of want to delay these turtles, but at the end of the day, as long as they're walking away and making sure that Super Marco gets ahead in his lane, then this becomes a much more difficult game for the side of BG. An early corrosion site coming out from Super Marco, 4 minutes 20 seconds. They go for DHA, slapping trouble. Oh no. Commits the flicker, dashes on through. Blink and Nico want to finish the job. Oh, it's a 3v1. How is Flap surviving? No. How is Flap still alive? There's the Mystic Gush. The Filipino cannon survives. I really wish we had a mic check for that because what was the decision there? Was he telling us, okay, I'm going to die. I'm going to buy some time. If you can make it, then come on over. If not, just chill. Because you can see the hovering coming in from Kyle. Like, he kind of wants the help, but at the same time, what can he really do? Yeah. The craziest thing about it is that Flap is not even rocking up Brave Smite. Like, that's Quantum Charge. He's still able to sustain himself. 
Flaptizi knows this hero a lot. Here we go. Second turtle already spawned five minutes in. Few throws out. Mystic Projectile. In comes the final slash. Carbon with the Bravest Spider. Turtle at 10th of its health. Miko gets a retribution. Kyle Deezy half health coming in. Carbon with the flicker and the tail end of that big two-handed sword as the ghouls advance inside AP Brand's jungle. The ghouls are looking great. Two to one here. 100% turtle take rate. And this is the power spike for Burmese Ghouls. This is how you should be playing your composition. I like seeing Burmese Ghouls' aggression right now. And the fact that they are not getting baited out, getting outplayed by the members of AP Brain. As soon as I say that, oh, there is the gold coin. Oh, Blink with the pull! And Kyle Thiesi gets popped by Nico. <laughs> Talk about timing here. <laughs> Literally oh timing. The timing. It's, it happens, right? I think yeah. that it's a little unlucky for the side uh, for the side of Burmese oh, Ghouls. Oh, no. Charles. No. Charles coming what? in. Final slash displacing Carbon. Me? And just like that, he is so in control. He knows how much life he has left. Are you kidding me? You, you have to admit, it's <laughs> kind of upsetting it's that he's upsetting getting away. And you only have, like, literally just Thunder Belt. You don't even have a lifesteal. Uh, Emblem set, you don't have the Brave's Might, you don't have any items. Got a little heal on the Q, see though. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. It's not nothing. It's, it's not it's nothing. Bit. Please, Come please, on. just let me live. I mean, to be honest, considering that for most EXP laners, you know that you're going to be kind of left isolated on your own, on the your own side of the map, right? You're, yep. you're expected to be independent. But I think in this particular case, like, how far is he really pushing that line. He's taking independence to a whole other level. He's self-sustaining. <laughs> he's straight up photosynthesizing. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, he's, <laughs> he's financially stable, that's for sure. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Looking with 13 more seconds for the next turtle to spawn, I think it's a little unlucky that it keeps on spawning on this side of the map because Burmese Ghouls would be more than happy to go on this bottom side. But now, with the lane swap and especially with the tier one broken on this side, now the Burmese Ghouls can take full advantage of their comp. And so far, I think AP Brand have understood the assignment. They know that they're down about a thousand gold. They know that the ghouls are playing with initiative, and this is where the Burmese want to oh. be. There's the pull Speaking of by Nico. Speaking of initiative, you see that Kajabla stitch combo. Are they even concealed at this point? Uh oh. They're oh. rotating in. They find Few. Gets a divine judgment off camera. He gets popped by stitch. Popping the torn for memory carbon. Drawing a line between the ghouls and AP Bren. Going for the bravest fighter early on. Flicker still in tow. Ogwen coming in with the full combo. And now the turtle take resumes. Oh, it's not gonna turn into no. a lord just yet. We're already past the eight minute mark. And this is a turtle dance if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Rare sights. Kaltizi is uh, level ahead of Nico. Oh, another bravest fighter. Flaptizi oh, finds the angle from the back. Bravest. Fighter in, oh. blazing the wet just enough to have the retribution, have a larger margin of error. AP Brent steals the final one. Darn, that was actually really, really close. Right on the very edge there. Nicely done coming in from the side of Kyle TC. But let's not forget the amount of abilities that were thrown to make this retribution yep. actually safe and secure. Ooh, nicely done by Flap TZ. Yep. The flappening, as we call it. It's happening. <laughs> the flappening. <laughs> the wonderful flapping. final slash catching four people. And not only the amount of people that he was able to get, like you said, the timing that it was. The CC plus the Red Tree combo coming out from AP Bren was crisp, I would say. Even though they already have the numbers, the XP advantage between Caltesi as well as Nico, they still utilize all of their tools just to secure the turtle. And then they get out safely. You might about, I'm on XP advantage? Dude, Caltesi, it's as if he didn't even suffer in the mid game, man. He's yep. still ahead now. 12 to 11, Nico half health, gets caught by the combo of Ogwin. Just like that, I, I feel AP Brent crawling back slowly. They are, and I think this is where we see the strongest part of AP Brent in these moments between the Lords, between the Turtles. They're making active moves across the map. In comparison to the Burmese Ghouls, right? I think their strongest is when that neutral objective is up, they have some really creative ideas with the way that they actually play with Stitch as well as Blink X. Uh, one good thing that uh, AP Brand is doing is they're making sure that Super Marco is uh, getting the farm up. And he's not even contested. Zero, zero, and zero. At this point, you're happy if your cloud is like that. Especially because it's a close game. And Burmese schools eventually will run out of steam. Yep. So mid game is their power spike. 
and that will last until maybe 15 minutes. They have to make the moves right now. Otherwise, for AP Brands, naturally scaling lineup will be superior. Whoa, gentlemen, they're in their prime, is what we're trying to say. And just looking at that gold difference, the gold is not where you want it to be for the ghouls right now. Not at all, not at all. This is a wait, bot side, bot side, what's going on there? Oh, Carbon, 3v1, 4v1. Oh, he got ganked. He could not say anything to that. Now Nico trying to repair the situation. Catches Flap, and now the fight breaks out entirely. Stitch takes out few, Whoa. but Kyle Whoa. finds sweet revenge. And now Lena gets caught out. Flap TZ already spent his ult. There's a pull, not gonna happen in between the walls. AP Brent have initiative here. Two for one. Big timing here, this window, for them to steal away the Lord. Gets reset as Kyle TZ wails away. Pushing back Nico and Lena. Blink holding the river bush. What's gonna happen? He spots out Marco. Oh, he's the one who gets spots out this time around. And he gets on out of there. AP Brent, they want this Lord, they need it. Final slash by Flap TZ. Puts him where he wants him. Carbon coming in with the bravest fighter. Kyle TZ scores, and the fight continues. Super Mario with a blazing duet and the nether realm from the ghouls getting them just enough time to back off man this is this is one heck of a game ap brand being proactive on the bottom side but more importantly the fact that burmese ghouls are making the correct decisions three all big ultimates all wait hold on hold oh, on oh divine judgment on the flap tz and he survives but only for a second more as stitch takes him down man a caster just can't compliment you <laughs> at this point right you know every single time it just occurs like this and you know hopefully ap brand don't give another one as they already have the lord on their side pushing towards the bottom lane I mean, great idea coming from Burby Schools. Back to back objective dances, they use and utilize the Kaja ultimate on the few. The Divine Judgment on the few meant that they will eliminate one. But in the previous Lord Dance, Kaltizi found Stitch. It was more than enough. The damage was more than enough. Stitch doesn't have the Wind of Nature yet. And the fact that they already lost Ooh. their EX Planer, that meant that there was not enough vision on the side of Burby Schools to stay in the Lord area. And AP Brand just. Uh, a better macro decision overall. They push the bottom lane and then they position Kaltizi in the mid where he can snipe people. I mean, can you blame the Boromir's goals for taking a fight like that? I felt like it was more the fact that AP Brem were able to find that trade in the first place because three big ultimates are down. I felt like even if I was part of the Boromir's Ghoul squad, I would have made the exact same decision. Gentlemen, it seems to be a matter of forcing it. Mm -hmm. One of them just wanted it more and one of them just had a better go at it. And right now, that's AP Bren. AP Bren, same situation as what, maybe four minutes ago wherein we said, Burmese Ghouls, you have to seize the day. You have to know that this is your window. This is your power spike. It slipped away. Yeah. We were at 13 minutes. What were you saying, Wolf, well, earlier? 15? 15. Forget about it. Ooh. It's AP Bren's game now. Ooh. Two minutes. I mean, two minutes left until we hit that point, but with the 4K lead that AP Bren have, I can definitely understand the sentiment, especially yeah. when we start looking at the items as well. We yeah. got Ice Queen Juan already finished. Like, if anybody gets even clipped by few, this yes. could be a potential problem. Exactly. It's a massive problem. And then you're looking at Flap TZ, who can man the front lines now with Antique Tiras as well as Dominance Ice. That's two items that literally shuts down three heroes of Burmese goals. That's the Brody out, that's the car that's Carbon Slapulapu out of the equation, and also that's Nico getting neutralized by just the itemization that we see from Flap TZ. Man, I hate to be the kind of commentator that goes, hey, you hit, you missed a spot, but are we missing out on big ticket Nether Realms? Is that just me? I feel like it, as much as we would like to believe that the big ticket from Netherrealm is going to actually make a difference in these cases, let's also consider the fact that AP Brand have really good ways of smothering their opponents, right? Like looking for those disengages. Flaptizi doesn't necessarily always have to engage. He, he, he can just slow them down. Hey, final slash, push you away. Oh no, you got the point of your spatial migration away. And Few never wants to be in that forward position. So therefore, he's going to be the next person to deter their opponents. I just don't see a way for Burmese Ghouls to be able to collapse on their opponent other than Carbon and Blink X. Those are the only two. Yeah, they're, they're, they're juggling between the priority of Carbon, mm -hmm. Blink X, and protecting Stitch. That's a lot on the shoulders of Lena right now. Are we expecting a hero play here, Wolf? Like, I'm looking for Blink X and Carbon. Yeah. They, they gotta make something happen somehow. Expecting. Maybe no, but I think that's the only option now for Burmese schools. Yep. Oh, look at Somebody that has door. to make a hero play, but... It's melting! Oh, they nobody. are setting it up from this bush, though. Carbon coming in from what the long reset. bush. No concealed play coming in from either side. Lord gets reset. I think AP Bren knows there's shenanigans afoot. Yep. 
And what, what, are, what they are, will be doing is to clear the mid lane first. Because their bottom lane is already getting pushed out, but fortunately they have a turret anyway, so that's going to be taken care of. They might lose the turret because of this, but they will do, uh, win the war. And Ogwin gets the aggro, they will reset it again because now the Nolan can take care of the top lane. Every lane is going to be A-OK -okay for AP Brand. They even are slow pushing the bottom oh, lane. Oh, here we go. We were looking for it. Wait. The ghouls oh, find the conceal. Be good. They it's move. Be good. They, oh, no. they move into the river bush. And Kyle Tz, I don't know. Knows. He knows. Oh, oh he comes in. No one gets pulled. It's Marco. It's the perfect target. But there's no follow through as Blink X gets taken down. Oh no. Oh no. It was a good intent, but they could not do the plan. And now they have to recover or concede the Lord. AP Bren now, the ultimate opportunists, oh. take the Lord and continue their assault. You understand why he went for that play, but. The timing was just not there. And AP Bren was more veteran team to kind of foresee that kind of uh -oh. play. Uh-oh, the gush coming in from few. Flap flickering back. Stitch gets him. And here's another one we were looking for. Few in trouble. Gets down to about 8 HP. Gets the heal. Still playing with some range. As the rest of AP Bren collapse. Down goes Carbon. Lena and Nico retreat. Super Marco still wants his man. One bullet short. The ghouls are able to retreat. Damage control. Oh man, Carbon overextended there. Like he made the play, he needed to start moving backwards. You can't be wasting your time standing up for hoping that you can keep on zoning them, especially once we reach this later stage of the game where AP Red has so much more damage and your Lapu starts to fall off. Oh, it's, I mean, if, if we could change anything, I just hope that Burmese, oh, whoa. Here we go. The ghoul's looking to punish. There's a big pull on the Ogwin. He does have an immortality, the defensive gush. Kyle Tz coming in and out, dashing through that wall. The ghoul's able to defend. Like I mentioned earlier, it could have been so different had they just waited just a couple more seconds more. Yep. We saw that Nolan rotating down. They had no idea that they were in that bush, but AP Bryant, great game sense yep. throughout. You know, walking up to kind of initiate something, and unfortunately, Burmese Ghouls bit onto it too soon. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> purple going over to AP Bren. What timing from Marco, what mechanics. And by the way, Flap DC just used the final slash to kind of <laughs> nudge the, the, the buff away from the, the Burmese Ghouls members. That was a, a smart play, Mr. Uh, David. Yep. Oh, that was calculated. And now they do the same thing to the purple, but Nico says, nah, -uh, not today. Not this Damn. time. Oh, man. I love the idea that they're just planting flags everywhere, yeah. just saying, nope, this is yep. mine. This is my property yep. now. It's tagging them, mine. Oh, yeah. it's, it's upsetting, but at the same time, you can't blame them, right? Yep. They're really far ahead. And now that the goal lead is actually coming to a point where it's not necessarily going to matter in just a little bit, I think that even if Burmese ghouls even it out, we're still looking for that hero play. We're still <sighs> waiting for either Marco or even Pew to make a mistake. We were looking for it, and we saw half of it, right? We yeah. saw Blink find the perfect target. Mm -hmm. It's just... Half the other half of the movie, they asked us to vacate the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the action scene? I, that well, was it. That will be the worst uh, happening in my life. I wish that would not happen to me. It's basically Inception, but as soon as the heist was about to go down, exactly. the lights go on. Like what? Yeah, yeah. Or better yet, people are just bringing their phones into the cinemas and trying to record it, and someone had to stop it at some point, right? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. You but wouldn't divine judgment in the five. <laughs> <laughs> Now with the Lord spawning, this is a Luminous Lord, mind you. That This is not easy to take down. It's AP evolved. Bren, they, look, at that. look at them. They're right in front. That was so quick. All yeah. right. Timing might be off. I, I wonder what Nico and Carbon are thinking. But yeah, no, here we go. Blink coming in. Gets caught oh, off by Fused Projectile. Dude. Ogwin with a full-on combo. And Carbon coming in with the Bravest Fighter. Netherrealm saving them already. Blink oh. with a pull. And Marco gets popped. Nico gets the kill. Carbon's still alive. It's a 4v5 situation as the ghouls come back to life. But they also have to come back to their base as AP Bren's minions come on in. They're being wait, stopped. Wait. AP Bren. The oh, minions they're have still spawned. good. They're fine. Oh. But they have to defend. Burmese ghouls find the big kill. But they also have to put on the big boy pants. They say, we got to defend. Oh, my goodness. It's stressful to see. Oh! You were saying, how oh. easy gets a kill on Lena, but yes, what's stressful? It's, it's stressful to see your base under attack and the two people who are supposed to push it out and clear it out decide to go back into the fight and only leave Lapu by himself to do all the dirty work himself, man. Oh. Yeah. Oh. AP Bren are overloading the ghouls. 
they were celebrating that win, that pickoff, but then again, you have to snap back to reality. This is what's happening right now. Ogwin finds a good on combo. Few puts out the gush. The Lord's still standing. Nico versus Kyle. Kyle versus Nico and the minions. The ghoul's still alive. Okay, a moment to breathe finally, especially for the ghouls. The second wave is going to come on in, and they know that it's going to break at least one of these inhibitors, right? Oh. Nico low. They might force it. Oh, Carbon no. comes in, gets hit with a final slash, serves up the fuse, gush, and Carbon's still alive. What's going on? Blink coming in, looking for another big DJ. But he's going to know. He's going to respect the fact that he can't force anything. <sighs> what an intense defense. Coming up from Burby Schools, and it's mainly because of AP Bread just taking the initiative, right? Taking the tempo of that mini game that they were, they were, they were playing. The fact that AP Bren was almost able to take out Carbon, that's actually massive if they took out the Immortality, but fortunately for Burmese Carbon, still has the Immortality for now. And he's wailing away, gets hit with another oh, final oh, stitch, flash. Look stitch. at this, Stitch! Popping! Kyle Deezy's <gasps> Immortality what gets away. Where was the damage what? from? How did that happen? Oh my god. Did we just miss that exchange? Huh? Huh? Talk about a Brody specialist, dude. Right? That, uh, it was so quick. It happened all so fast. And even the Divine Judgment was utilized at that moment. Here's right. him. Carbon once more with the Bravest Fighter. It's as if this thing has no cooldown. And they defend. That top lane inhibitor falls. The mid lane stands. Oh, man. man. I would say AP Ben, they do have the better late game. They have the Gord, they have the Claw, they have great scaling across all of their players. But there was this old proverb for AP Brand where they're all, almost all of their losses during MPL Season 12 and some parts of IESF and some parts of the other tournaments that went out, it was, uh, I believe it was SPS also, they struggled in the late game. Oh, wait they up! struggle in the late game! Where was that from? Marco gets caught out by Stitch. I was... On Wolf's story is, yeah, they, they do struggle in the late game, but what? wait, 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 here we go. This Lord fight, this is an unprecedented situation for the Ghouls. They have never had a game this good against AB Bren right now, this situation. Blink Perfect. gets hit with a final slash, Carbon slashing away at few. He's getting smothered oh. by four, gets his immortality pop at the rest of the Ghouls, wail away at the Lord, an evolved Lord, their oh, very no. first Lord. Can Nico oh. get it in? Yes, he does, Retribution is good. And now, the Nether Realm saving Blink. They're gonna get the pull onto Flap Easy. Not gonna even pop his immortality as the Philippine had on walk away stitch gets popped three defenders from the ghouls four from ap bren looking to crash down into their base this might be it all the waves are crashing in top middle oh, and bottom two seconds, no. two seconds. Oh, alert was seconds. oh they need the lord they need the lord there it is spawns down bottom mid lane inhibitor falls i mean they can clear this up right they can clear this up if ap bren just take their time with this they should be able to whittle it down they've got two waves on their side and if they've smothered both at the very least the burmese oh, ghouls no. wait no, Ogwen Ogwen is back, by Ogwen the way. Fine, right? Carbon's come back go. at 13. It's 10. The longest flap. 20 seconds. Flap. Oh, gets tried to pull in. It does not happen. Lord gets taken down. Five members of AP Bren here applying pressure. Can the Burmese defend? Carbon is alive. Oh, here comes Carbon. Look at all the rifts. Look at all the damage. A divine judgment on the flap. He gets his immortality pop. And Carbon and Lena leaning hard on AP Bren. Carbon goes Whoa. down. Lena goes down. Stitch just waiting, Flap Easy gets popped, Ogwin loses his immortality. Oh, this is an actual life bar oh we're looking at, gentlemen. Goodness. The ghoul's still here, one for one, 23 minutes in. They're ready to play, they've evened it up, 10 to 10, 23 minutes into the game. We were talking about the fact that, hey, we, they've already missed their power spike. We're expecting AP Brent to really take full advantage of it. And now, with the creativity of the Borme's goals, and especially with a couple of mistakes coming in from Super Marco, giving them a breath of life here. No inhibitors Ooh. still, but if they get that up next upcoming Lord, they might be able to oh, even out whoa, the whoa, odds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh, that's a full-on combo. Into the skies they go. The Netherrealm saving them for just a little bit longer. Kyle Deezy, look at this. Watching, waiting, commiserating. Does not find oh, the pop-up. Oh, as Nico go. goes in, uses the immunity and dashes away, gets his immortality popped. And he's going to go down here unless he has something to say. Another set of iframes dashes on Damn. through. Stays oh, himself, start upon memory, popping. Fuse immortality. And that's one big HP bar, one resource that AP Bren have to look out for. Crazy mechanics for both things. Stitch used the flicker forward when they're trying to get back. What the hell? 
I wouldn't have even considered it, only because, number one, he's got immortality. Number two, Lord Spotting in 30 seconds, exactly. he's not going to have his flicker. But Fuel, my oh my. There was, you know, five years ago, he was going to Mr. Buy himself at a certain point. But the immortality at the right moment. You can see Stitch. Oh my goodness. He bought the immortality just a split second. He knows. Oh man. Oh, Thank you for the instant replay coming in from Kadia. As now we get to a very critical moment in this game. And uh, I mean, considering that Lena hasn't been dying as often as you would like to imagine, he's been stacking up real good here. Yeah. Okay, 23 minutes, FlapTZ went for a game changer item. I love it. Twilight Armor. There's a lot of big bursts coming up from Burmese, including the Brody damage. If you count the Ghost Bursters from Linda, that's also massive damage that you take out. Uh, that's going to be a game changer now for AP Brand. Speaking of which, here's another dance. This is uh, the uh, fifth lord of the game. 25 minutes scaled. No longer gonna get stronger. Flap easy gets pulled in. Forced oh. it out. That flicker gets hit with a divine judgment. Still alive though. Down to a tenth of his health as Kyle Deezy scores. Now Ogwin gets to use his ult. Full on combo coming in. Still alive. Forcing it out. Nico gets the kill. Nico gets popped by Marco though. And that's a one for one. Two for one now. As Few gets caught out in the back. Harbin goes. Two for two as well. Kyle Deezy finds sweet. Oh again. my what? And there's a pop. Kyle Deezy just going from target to target to target. And now it's just Lena oh. and the Blink. Ooh. The winner, Tranche, coming in. Flap Deezy, still alive, gets pulled in. Final slash by the Filipino Cannon as he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, Blink is the only one left. Can he defend? AP Brent coming in with the Lord. And they are going to take this series in a 2 0 sweep. History tends to repeat itself, but my god, with the new faces of the Burmese Wolves, they put up one hell of a defense up against AP Brand, but it still was not enough. AP Brand take the game 2-0. to A showdown of mechanical skills that we saw. There's so many items sold on, so many items bought. A fraction of a second, the decision-making, even the Netherrealm, the big 